Hello everyone. So we are back. It's sixth of March, two thousand nineteen, and we are here with daily cyber security news. So the first news is uh, VMware aims for security market launches service defined firewall. So the news is from the RSA conference, which is happening right now. VMware is. Uh, Bringing more into the IT security market with a software-defined strategy that rhymes with how the company approached the data center and network markets earlier. So the CEO of VMware, Pat Gelsinger, will deliver a keynote at the RSA conference on Thursday. VMware is also launching a service-defined firewall that will secure services and software instead of focusing on just infrastructure, which is with the NSX model they are doing. So. To get into the security landscape with the new VMware Service Defined Firewall, uh, VMware will be using existing VMware NSX, which is Microsoft Implementation, and App Defense, and they will be calling this new firewall or new technology as Service Defined Service Defined Firewall, um, and they are also going to call it Intrinsic Security because it's going to be for the application. It, it's going to check. Uh, the application behavior and uh, provide the automatic automatic protection. So VMware Service Defined Firewall focuses on applications within an enterprise. So this Service Defined Firewall has application verification based on microservice variations over time, and uh, they're going to use machine learning from where it's deployed in the virtual machines to build a map of how an app should run. As um, if you guys are tracking this um, this market for micro segmentation, you would know that uh, how VMware started. Actually, in two thousand thirteen, uh, they started with the NSX platform when it was launched, and in two thousand seventeen, they went ahead and uh, said it's micro segmentation version two, where they where they added content aware micro segmentation, and now in two thousand nineteen, they are adding service defined firewall. Um, where, where, where they say it's uh, for comprehensive application zero trust. So these are three steps of how um, VMware have entered into security and um, try to capture this market. Going to the next news, which is for China. So eighteen unprotected MongoDB servers expose surveillance data. So the news is um, from the security researcher named Victor Gevers. Who discovered eighteen MongoDB servers that are publicly available without password protection? That's a problem with MongoDB servers because by default it doesn't come with a password, and people need to go and and um, add a password to to uh, add security. So the open MongoDB databases, which uh, this researcher found, uh, contain part of Chinese surveillance program. So uh, it's pretty famous that Chinese government do the surveillance. And it seems these MongoDB, MongoDB databases had that information for the Chinese citizens. Um, the exposed information includes online social services related data such as uh, profile names, ID numbers, photos, public and private conversations, file transfers, GPS locations, and many more stuff. So. This researcher noted that profile data, chats, and file transfers associated with almost 364 million profiles were processed on a daily basis and then distributed over different police stations in different cities in China. Uh, and and that's, that information is saved in this unprotected in these unprotected MongoDB servers uh, in different 18 locations. With these uh, databases, the local law enforcement usually investigate around 2,600 to 2,900 social media profiles and chat conversations. So this researcher also noted that uh, one of the intelligence feeds revealed that the distribution of trigger events are directed to the police stations which are identified by numbers. So although tracking these, these users, uh, although tra tracking the chat conversations is a pretty common practice in China as I was saying earlier. But uh, I think China should be a little bit more, uh, uh, more, more sensitive with this because they are, they are putting all this uh, sensitive information in um, unprotected uh, MongoDB databases. 
Going to the third news we have for today, NSA release Gidra, a free software reverse engineering toolkit. So at the RFC conference today, the NSA, National Security Agency, released Kidra, which is a free software reverse engineering tool that the agency had been using internally for well over a decade. The tool is ideal for software engineers actually, but will be very, uh, very useful for malware analysts uh, and, and uh, other people who are interested in, in uh, reverse engineering. The reason uh, Kidra is a free alternative to IDA Pro, which is a similar reverse engineering tool, um, but it's a very expensive one uh, under the commercial license, which is usually priced uh, in the range of thousands of US dollars per year. So this one being offered for free, most experts expect Gidra to snap up a big portion of the reverse engineering tools market uh, within the weeks. Actually, we can we can already see people talking about it a lot in the, in the uh, videos and in the news. Um, and for the technical features which are included in Gidra, it's um, coded in Java, has a graphical user interface and works on Windows, Mac or Linux. Fourth news for today is about Middle East. So it's a Saudi caller ID app which leaves data of 5 plus million users in unsecured MongoDB server. So another MongoDB issue. Um, Dalil, D-A-L-I-L, -L, is an Android app that provides caller ID services similar to Truecaller, but for only Saudi and other Arabian users, which has leaked user data for a week because of MongoDB database that has been left uh, accessible online without a password. So this was discovered by a security researcher named uh, Ran Loker and uh, Noam Rothem. Uh, with the, they expose that the database contains uh, what appears to be the app's entire data from user personal details to activity logs. Most of the data which is included in the database uh, belongs to Saudi users, uh, which they found based on the country code associated with, the, with the each entry. But they said that the data also uh, available for Egyptians, Emir Emiratis, Europeans, and even few Israeli or Palestinians based on the number. At, at the time of writing, the database is, is still exploiting roughly five, uh, ex exposing roughly 585.7 GB, which is a big um, database. Um, the researcher says that the new records are being added daily, which means that this app, this is app's production server, other than an abandoned uh, test system or a redundant backup, backup system. Um, also, the researcher says that at one point, uh, one of the threat actor accessed the database, encrypted some of the data, and left a ransom note behind. But uh, Dalil's IT team didn't even notice the breach and continued to save new user data and app logs on top of the obviously compromised database. I wish someone uh, can um, can inform the, the uh, IT team of this application, DALIL, um, otherwise, um, it's, it's uh, going to expose uh, more user information. And now we are going to the last news for the day, which is uh, from Google. So Google launches uh, Backstory, a new cybersecurity tool for businesses. Um, this is coming from Google's one year old cybersecurity venture named uh, Chronicle, as they announced their first commercial product called Backstory, a cloud-based enterprise level threat analytics platform that has been designed to help companies quickly investigate incidents or uh, pinpoint vulnerabilities and hunt for uh, potential threats. So this new tool, Backstory, allows organizations to privately upload and store their petabytes of internal security telemetry on Google Cloud Platform and leverage the machine learning and data analytics technologies to monitor and analyze it efficiently to detect and investigate any uh, potential threats from a unified dashboard. So this is something, this is like a SIEM tool uh, from Google in the, in the market where we already had a lot of SIEM tools. Uh, but this one, uh, Backstory, converts uh, log data such as DNS traffic, NetFlow, endpoint logs, proxy logs into meaningful, quickly searchable and actionable information to help companies 
gain insights into digital uh, threats and attacks on their networks, but at, at a scale to offer a more complete picture of the threat landscape. Um, earlier, Microsoft also uh, announced a similar security analytics service called uh, Threat Hunter and Azure Sentinel, which Microsoft is pitching as the first native SIEM within a major cloud platform to help companies detect, prevent, and respond to threats across, across their networks. And uh, because of this news, um, the current biggest player got impacted, uh, Splunk, which is the biggest uh, or the most famous uh, SIEM um, solution provider, um, got, got hit as its stock went down by 5% on Monday after Google announced um, this solution. But we, we have to be careful. We don't know if this solution is going to be um, a competitor for Splunk because uh, this solution is a cloud-based solution. Um, uh, Splunk is a is a, is a uh, internal um, server solution, so it seems a bit a bit, bit different from what Google and Microsoft are um, providing. But we have to wait and see if um, actually it can be a replacement for Splunk or not. Okay, so that is all for today, and uh, we are going to add some uh, uh, video links in our description for POCs or anything related we find. So please go there if you want to find more information. Thank you everyone, we'll see you again.